Here we go, we're going to do a pad replacement for an MPC 4000. Um, this one has had the sensor replaced before but it's not been very good and they've torn the strip and so therefore these rows of pads no longer work so we've only got the centre line. So we have our new sensor array from MPC stuff, which is like that. And that's going to go underneath and replace the the current one that's there. So just listing things should get ready for doing this job. Obviously your sensor array which we have here, a decent size or med medium size Phillips screwdriver for undoing the, the casing, um, a three millimeter um, hex wrench or um, I think in this instance I'm actually using a T15 Torx because it will form the same function for undoing these fellas here and this just picked up from Maplin's very very useful piece of kit it's just a box but it's a box with compartments for putting all the screws in trust me this is a very useful piece of kit a number of times I've lost screws or little small parts have gone missing and, and it means you can't, can't then put it back together properly this will save you a ton of headaches trust me so onward and upward and I shall now go on to do the rather boring part of dismantling and I shall see you guys in a minute Plastic panels removed, we then have to remove the screws that retain this top casing. So we have screws along here, along here, along here, and also holding the rear of the casing on as well. So I'm going to do those now. Once we've got these, we now need to remove these knob covers just to keep them out of the way from getting damaged. And they should also go in here. And we should find. Oh, right, one more screw. Always catches me out this one here. And we should have lift off. Voila. So this is our pad sensor. If I remove this, you can see a bit of the bodge that's happened. So I'm going to cut away parts of this to try and make it fit, which you shouldn't have to do. And here we can see I have severed the all important lines here are trying to fit it so I'm now going to go ahead and remove this now this is stuck down very firmly so this will probably destroy and leave bits behind as I remove it now the important thing is to get this base plate underneath absolutely clean before you install the new one that's why I've got some alcohol here not for drinking but for clearing up here and some Stanley blades to scrape off any residue because it must be absolutely clean. So here's going, pulling the old one off. Now under here, uh, I'll show you a zoom and a cutaway. This should just pull out. Uh, there's the, yeah. The 4000 is just a push fit as opposed to a lock fit like some of the others and there's the old sensor 
can see there it's been knackered in installing these four lines have been cut so that's why the pads don't work so that's rubbish now we need to make sure this is see if I run my fingers over here you can see there's glue and residue this needs to be absolutely clean so out with the alcohol feel that it's smooth and not sticky so there's no residue left on it that's good that's what we want nice smooth finish we should remove this first that is how it's going to mount and that should now be secured in there so with this back in place that should line up like that we can use that to line the pad up with so that should be that should fit quite nicely with that holding that hole lined up that is our sensor in the correct position. So now we have the fun getting the backing off. So I'm going to take this corner first. Use that to align that corner. There we go, that's that corner in place. So now, what we need to do. Okay, so we now have the sensor stuck on, Make sure, again these holes aligned with the matches running through them means that that square and the pads will match up with the sensor. Just run over this with your thumb to make sure it's properly fixed down and glued into place because you don't want any slippage or move movement and then we need to connect this into this connector here. We can lose the matches now. Put it in place. Tricky. Just a little push one corner in and keep going. There we go. So that's now connected. And we should be able to line that up, and then I'm going to refit the screws for this and test and reassemble. Okay, just before we reassemble, I'm going to take the uh, opportunity when I've got the lid off to give the pots and encoders and everything a good clean with deoxit, which just helps keep them running, stop oxide forming on the contacts, and just keeps everything nice tip top. Um, so, we're going to spray some deoxit here in the phaser trap, like that, and just work it in. And we've got it here just to wipe up the excess give that good working and we'll do the same his neighbour 